Yes, hello, uh, Yves Rachsteinach and Baptiste Genio. We all both together belong to Toulouse Les Orgues, which I will just say a few words about that. Um, Baptiste has made a video to show a little bit his activity on the field of education for organ. Um, but I would like just shortly, as representative of Toulouse Les Orgues, maybe to say two different things. One about Baptiste's activity in terms of education, but also a second point, which is what we have done to increase new publics in the organ festival in Toulouse. So as you know, this festival is existing since 1996, so it has a long history already. And so the first thing I would like to, to show is what Baptiste is doing for children since 2002. So I just, uh, just discovered today that in fact it's now 20 years that he is regularly active on the field of education, uh, young people, children, on the field of organ. So you can have a video play, thanks. So how does it work? Um, there are different... Um, is, is it possible to have the video sound a little bit lower so my voice will not be too loud? Thanks a lot. So, um, every year, a certain number of classes, let's say 10 classes of primary schools, are selected to have a kind of parcours, so a path of three steps. The first step, children can attend a concert during the festival, which is specially designed for younger, for younger pu pupil. And I will say later that Baptiste is making new programs and new shows, organ and other things, every time specially designed for younger people. What you see here is already the second step. The second step is classes are brought to organ lofts and they have music and explanations. How an organ works, how it sounds, and as you see, classes are taken to different buildings, different instruments, different music, and so they can discover also a little bit the richness of the organ world. So first step, they listen to concert. Second step, they have a close interaction with Baptiste, who really leads them, as you can see. By the way, you see here one of our instruments, a kind of Renaissance table organ. But very soon you should see also the third step, which is the time when children can play. So they are then put all together in front of small instruments, which have basically a few pipes per instrument, blowers at one end, and a small keyboard, which is not a real keyboard, but just keys to open the, the, the palette. So it means that when you have 12 small instruments, like we have, it allows to have 24 kids, you see them here, one in front and one at the back. So Baptiste, is able to have all these kids, even if they have never seen a, a, a note of music, to just sit in front and try to make a rhythm, a melody, and so on. So that's one of the, the, the interesting thing, is to have all these, uh, these kids in the action and directly related actively to the organ. Um, before we go, we go on, I think here you have also C'est avec les, euh, les enfants de l'hôpital. Um, Baptiste has two activities, one with regular classes, but he has also an activity inside hospitals. So he has done a lot of things with blind children, uh, children who has disabilities, and also, at another step, not only with children, but also with uh, sick persons in hospital who were, in fact, at the last stage of their lives. So he came with organs to make music and to bring something to them. Anyway, a part of this uh, in-hospital thing, you see here another um, project of Toulouse-les-Orgues, where Baptiste is in fact not taking 
classes in these three steps I explained you, but in a more ambitious plan where he follows the class and make them play and have a collaboration with another art on a longer period of time. So not only in three steps lasting, of course, a few hours, but here on several days where children are invited to play the organ at a certain moment, as you see, but also in this video you see a project where the organ was mixed with dance, so we had a choreographer coming from New York, somebody from the Merce Cunningham company, and the choreographer made, made all the children dance, and you saw it was Baptiste Marlouvrard who was playing the music for the dancing of the children, and at the second part of the evening, you had the same class playing the organ in this system where you have one blowing and one playing. So every two years, we have one of these projects um, bringing together the organ either with dance, either with electronic, also with theater, also with singing, also with movies. And it is always shown to the public inside the festival. So the preparation of Baptiste is made weeks and months before the festival. But when the children are ready, they really perform in front of an audience, of course made a lot by the parents of the children, but the f one of the first projects, the one with dance, had a quite a huge audience and I must say that people were absolutely amazed by what they heard. I mean, they just saw these children playing and as I repeat, none of these children has any musical education before coming to this project. You see here one of these performances. We have heard many times speaking of audience should participate. <laughs> and I think here is one of the moments where you have children again active in um, a music project. We have 12 of these little things, <laughs> very useful. So um, that's basically what Baptiste does with children in these various classes. We have counted that he's doing this since 20 years with 10 classes. So we have counted more than 4,000 children who has attended his presentation of the organ over all these years. So it makes quite a history. And once I think we should do a kind of um, what has it brought to the city? Because, of course, it's all in Toulouse, and the city of Toulouse is sponsoring this project. It's called, in fact, Passport pour l'art, so Passport for the Art, and it doesn't, it's not only for organ, but it's open to all classes on various, of course, arts, and it's open for many, many classes in the city. And just if I have not mentioned it, Baptiste is really creating also very interesting artistic proposals with organ since 2002. I think he has already done six or seven different programs for organ 
for the children, of course, so young public um, shows or spectacles. He will again create a new one for us in Toulouse Les Orgues in 2022. Maybe I bet about the tale of Hansel and Gretel, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> so the artistic creation process is still going on with Baptiste, and we are very proud of what he does. So thank you, Baptiste. I, I think we can applaud him because. <laughs> And if you leave me the microphone for two more minutes, I will try to be very short about the second chapter I wanted to talk about. Because I'm artistic director since 2014 in Toulouse Les Orgues, and one of the questions is the question which is in the front of your program, how to get new audiences. And I must say that I tried a few answers in Toulouse Les Orgues since 2014. This answer was getting new audiences with the collaboration of other festivals. So what I, what I did, I just contacted festivals which were active on the electronic music scene. And I said, well, would you be interested of, in organizing a concert together? And they said, oh yes, it's absolutely fun. We have musicians which will, will be absolutely excited to come, which was already a surprise for me to discover that people who were making electronic music the whole year were excited to play on an acoustic organ. So what was the first surprise? Which was not an entire surprise because we share together with these people long held notes and big spaces and also very low notes, of course. But we started, we took the risk and we had indeed absolutely new audiences, people who never enter the church. So we have done several things and we are now trying of course to increase what I begin to call a kind of alternative organ scene. Musicians who are not organists, that's basically because it's alternative. But the fascinating point is that we have really now created since these years a younger audience which comes regularly to these concerts and of course, at the beginning, they came because they were, the communication went through the other festival, the Electro Alternative Festival, Les Siestes Electroniques, and so on. But now it has become established that there is something going on in Toulouse Les Orgues on that field. So we don't need any more of this collaboration. We can make a concert, and we have this young generation people coming to the concert. So that's quite a very positive uh, um, answer to, to this, uh, this proposal. And what I wanted to, to do also in this chapter was to create bridges between the two music worlds. Because of course you had these people coming from the electronic scene like C, who was making music for, for the, the television or people who were absolutely not organists. They wanted to have links with you, the organists. And this was not so, so, so uh, easy. I remember I asked, for instance, Thomas Hospital here, well, would you agree to make a project with somebody living also in Paris and so? So first problem, they, they needed three months to get uh, common data on the agenda. And then um, the other musician, I just don't remember his name, fortunately, came. They met in, uh, in Saint-Eustache. And later I asked Thomas, well, yes, are you going to do something together also? And Thomas said, well, yeah, I would like so, but you know, he's only excited about playing clusters on the Contra Bombardo 32 foot. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, the aesthetic concern was a problem. <laughs> But later on, because this story is already three or four years old, later on, I, I got another story I want to, to and then I stop. Um, a young organist from Rome, Giulio Tosti, sent me a musical proposal, and this guy was a prize winner of our competition. So he was a perfectly good trained organist of a conservatorium. But he said, well, can I send you this music? You know, it's, it's a little bit a personal project. I, I don't know if it's going to interest you. And it was absolutely music looking like the one I was listening from the electro world. It was the same kind of music. So for me, he was the missing link between the two worlds. And now I see 
beginning in the organ classes a real interest from certain organists for a different approach of sound, of music, of something which is just more creative and maybe more open to other things. So I hope that in the coming years we are going to just say open the door for things which are a little bit different from the regular approach uh, through the repertoire and have all these young organists test their own creativity because that's what I believe these young organists, they are not only good performers of Buxtehude and Pachelbel, but they can maybe also offer new things to what we do with organizing concerts. So that's what excites me in the future. Sorry to have been so <laughs> long. Thank you very much. Thank you for this, Eve. Peter van Dijk has a question. Yeah, Eve, thank you very much for this inspiring introduction. Uh, there is one important question if I listen to your talk about uh, and the fascinating involvement of children in playing organ when they never had music lessons before. And, and my question is, have you imp an impression after this, also Baptiste, after this 20 years, how many of these children started after this project to play the organ themselves and to go to the music school or the conservatory in Toulouse to have organ lessons? Um, yes, it's a good question, but we don't have the answer. We don't follow the children in the, in, in the time. And um, uh, for me, the, the organ is, is the way. It's not uh, the end for this kind of project. I think I try to, to work with the children, with the, um, how they listen to music, how they understand, how they feel the music, but not specifically uh, organ music. But I don't know if there are, uh, in these children, uh, public for the festival or musician, uh, we don't know. Uh, because I, I ask you this, because my wife in Alkmaar is also an organist, and we have a do orgel in Alkmaar, and my wife is introducing that do orgel in projects in the primary schools, and well, it's the same effect as as, as in the in the different movies. Eh? The children are extremely enthusiastic, and that these projects are always ending in the Laurens Church, and then the children are able to play a song on the big Snitko organ, and they are all fascinated and enthusiastic. But the strange thing is that in our experience, it never happens the first, the, the next step eh, that a child is, is then calling, oh, I would like to have uh, a real organ lesson because I'm so fascinated by it. And I'm, I'm so interested to have this next step because finally it leads then to the project of Peter. Eh, and perhaps it's good for all of you uh, coming outside the Netherlands, here in Amsterdam, they have at the Amsterdam Conservatory uh, an education for young people. That means from 10 to 18 years old, and it is called the Sveling Academy. And in the Sveling Academy, there is no organ lesson, unfortunately, because there are no applicants for organ. But they have an enormous amount of violin players and piano players. And they have such a high level sometimes the level of these children is higher than in the conservatory. <laughs> but the interesting and strange thing is, if you look further, what is the environment these children come from, then I must say 80% of these very talented people going to the Sveling Academy, so the young talents, have parents who are musicians themselves. <laughs> and that makes a sort of isolation eh? and, and I think yeah, one very important aspect is how can we attract people who have not a surrounding, who have not, not an, uh, uh, parents uh, who, 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 who live with music, how can we attract these people to, to become musicians as well and to explore their, their, their talents because you know uh, to, to play on a very high level an instrument, also the organ, you have to start extremely early. Um, I'm trying to encourage 
organists in the project of Orchid. It, it has some similarities with what is happening in Toulouse. Uh, we have a, a lesson pattern of the first lesson is about different music instruments and families of instruments. The second lesson is building the do organ. And the third lesson is visiting the church and seeing a big organ and exploring that. Mostly followed up with uh, a special children concert. Um, to that concert, uh, parents are also invited. And what we, I try to encourage organists to is to make a special um, uh, uh, gift to children who really want to know more about the organ. Please come for three lessons, three introductory lessons to learn more about playing the organ and afterwards they can decide will I really get organ lessons but you have to make an offer for, with three lessons as a kind of introduction. But that's a problem in the Netherlands because a lot of organists don't make a living out of, yeah, uh, uh, of the church. Uh, they, they have their private school, private pupils to teach and it's not easy to make this offer. So I hope that there can be a way, and I'm uh, uh, interested, how is this working in other countries? I know in Sweden and in Denmark you have Orgelklubben and it works very good. 